it's important to remember while you meditate that what you're doing is exploring. You're not trying to program the mind in line with somebody else's notions of what it has to do. You're exploring possibilities. Can you stay with the breath? How long can you stay with the breath? Can you make yourself stay with the breath longer than you might have thought possible? Where are the little gaps where mindfulness lapses? Can you bridge those gaps? Can you relate to the breath in a friendly way? These are the questions you set up, and then you explore. This is important to remember that even though the Buddha has explored this territory himself and all the noble disciples have explored it, they've sent back reports on what can be found here. Still, for each of us it's a process of exploration. We're testing the Buddha's teachings. Is it possible, as he said, to find true happiness, a happiness that doesn't change? All he asks is that we keep our questions in the right, pointed in the right direction. As you sit and meditate, many times you come up with interesting insights, uncover things about the mind that you didn't, had never noticed before, possibilities that you had never realized were possible. Many times a weight is lifted off the mind, and many times our tendency is to focus on the outside. You suddenly see the, new wor the world in a new way. The world is like this, the world is like that. Those aren't the insights that the Buddha fo focused on. It more, <coughs> focused more on what is it possible for the mind to do? Can it operate in a way that it doesn't create suffering for itself? Then as you meditate, you begin to catch sight of little moments in the mind where things seem a lot less weighty than they did before. You feel less weighed down by different concerns, either long-term weights that you placed on the mind or just short-term ones. But it's important in each of those cases to turn around and look, what did, you just, what did you just learn about how the mind can function, how the mind has been functioning in better ways that you suddenly discover? Sometimes it's a general psychological issue. People have problems with guilt and blame. Suddenly so find that they have a moment without that guilt and blame. It's possible to look at the world without the guilt and blame. That's an important insight, just to remind yourself it is possible. You don't have to carry these things around. But as to what that says about the world, is it possible to live in the world without being guilty, without having blame? That's a more controversial issue, but that's not what the Buddha said to focus on. You focus on the fact that it is possible for you not to be carrying this weight around continually. The next time it comes up and you detect it, you realize you have the choice of putting it down. Just the realization that you could do it at one point, that's liberating. Remind yourself, there is a possibility. Sometimes the insights are related more directly to the meditation itself. It's possible to relate to the breath in a particular way. It's possible to relate to your feelings in a particular way. In other words, you don't have to identify with them. You begin to see them. The awareness really is separate from these things. It doesn't have to take on, lay claim to these things as being yours. That opens up a possibility in the mind. You see for a moment the mind was totally without any sense of identification with these things. It's possible. I think as many of these habits or these possibilities we uncover in the mind are skills that we've mastered in other areas, it's just we haven't applied them consistently. Many times feelings do come up in the mind, we don't identify with them, but we don't notice the fact. What we notice in the meditation is it's possible to apply that skill in areas we hadn't applied it before. This is why it's so important when a particular state arises in the mind, you try to maintain it in all sorts of different situations, because that's what the insight consisted of, is realizing that a habit you had before, which was useful in one area of your life, is actually can be used in other areas. After all, we don't go around holding on to all our cravings all the time. You have to let go of one craving in order to pick up another one. So the, the habit of letting go of craving is something we all have. To, our problem is that once we let go of one craving, it's because another one has come in to seem more compelling. So we let go of one craving only to pick up another one. But we do have that ability to let go of a craving. Our problem is we do it unconsciously and we do it as part of another process of picking up something else. 
But what the Buddha wants to teach us is you can let go, let go, let go, let go. If something is causing you suffering, if something is causing you pain, you can let it go. It might still be hanging around, but you're not holding on to it. And that's what makes all the difference in the world. It's like living near fire. As long as you're not grasping the fire, you're okay. You don't have to drive fire out of the world, and if you try it, of course, it would be impossible. But you learn all you have to do is just let go of it, and you're okay. You don't have to grab hold. Our problem is that we learn how to let go of one fire, but we find other kinds of fire, and we hold on to those. We think that somehow it's different. These are the funniest fires you have to hold on to. That other fire you could let go, well, that's because it's an unimportant case. But these other ones are more important, or they're in the mind. You have to hold on to anything that comes into the mind. An important part of insight is realizing you don't have to hold on. Things can be there in the mind. You don't have to lay claim to them. You don't have to let yourself be influenced by them. It's possible. And then you try to apply that possibility to other areas of your life, areas that you wouldn't have thought of before. But you begin to realize that you do have these habits that you carry around with you. Just focusing on the breath. If you try it continually, you begin to find that all the issues that you used to create around any activity, any job, any responsibility, they're going to come in and mess up the breath, which is why this is such a good place to take them on. Because after all, the breath is going to come in, it's going to go out. You don't have to do the pushing in, the pulling out. And when you realize that, you begin to see habits that you pick, picked up from other jobs, other responsibilities that are totally irrelevant here and actually get in the way. When you see them clearly, how they do get in the way here, remember that. Because they often get in the way in other activities in life as well. So the breath is a good testing ground. Remember years back when I first went to stay with the John Fu, he said, your only responsibility is to stay with the breath. And he meant in a way to clear away my thoughts of other responsibilities. What it did, of course, was made the breath seem suddenly onerous. It was that weight. It was a responsibility all of a sudden. But then as I worked with it, one of the big lessons came in learning how to be with that responsibility and not, not make it a weight, not make it a burden. After all, why should the breath be a burden? It's what you do to stay alive. It's the basic process, basic force that keeps you alive. But it's a good lesson in seeing how the mind can create problems out of even the simplest things, things that are in its own interest, learning how to be with the breath comfortably, learning how to breathe comfortably. All of a sudden that became a big issue, a big weight. And if you step back a little bit, you realize how ridiculous that is. And it's that ability to step back and look at things and say, wait a minute, this is not right. Creating unnecessary problems for myself. It's in seeing that they're unnecessary. That's when you can let them go. And noticing how you let them go, that's an important thing to notice as well. Because then you can take that insight and you apply it to other places where you're making yourself miserable for no good reason at all. And you realize it's possible to let go. Even though there are problems in the world, there are issues in the world, things you've got to be responsible for, you don't have to weigh yourself down with them. It's possible. This is what the insights are all about, seeing possibilities in the mind. Possibilities for letting go of old habits that create suffering. So when anything new comes up in the mind, keep reflecting back on that. What did that sh show about? Or what does this new thing, this new state that you have in the mind show about the possibilities of the mind, the way it can relate to things that involves less suffering? Keep your, the questions of your insights directed in that area, and you find that you learn useful things. We're talking today about the issue of the insight and suddenly seeing that the world is perfect as it is. That's directing your attention in the wrong direction. You're not supposed to think about the world as being perfect or imperfect. Look around and say, what did that just teach you about the mind? The way the imperfection of the world is a burden. But do you feel personally responsible for it? Do you carry guilt around around it? Is it possible not to carry that guilt? That's the important question of the insight. Because that then becomes a skill you can apply to other things. If your attention gets directed out to the world, whether the world's perfect or not, you can argue for days and days and days and get nowhere at all. But 
opportunity for you to look at the inside as a opportunity to see that you've developed a new skill in the mind. You could drop a particular way of thinking. Then you remember that skill. You can apply that in other areas as well. This is why there's the emphasis. The John Fung was not interested in hearing about your meditation experiences unless you could keep them going for a while. So his emphasis was, okay, can you, if you had talked about a meditation state, he'd say, oh, you're in there right now? And you'd say, well, no. He'd say, well, I'll go back and work on it. Bring it to me. That's when you've had an insight like this. Okay, see if you can maintain that skill. After all, it is a skill. Whatever you learned, look at it as a skill that you just learned, a new possibility in the mind. And see if you can apply that, how much you can apply that skill to other areas. That's your test of your insight. Some skills are universally ap applicable, others are more useful only for specific problems that come up in the mind. Well, you learn a lesson by trying to apply it to everything and then seeing, well, it doesn't work here, it doesn't work there, but it does work here. Because, as I said, many of the skills you learn in the process of meditation are things that you've been able to do in other areas. It's simply a question of learning how to apply them right here in terms of the mind's quest for happiness. In this area where you can really watch things carefully in the present moment. So we're here to explore possibilities in the mind. Remember, the, the Buddha's own quest began with what all of his friends told him was an impossibility. The question of whether there is a true happiness that doesn't change. His friends all told him, well, don't even bother. It's impossible. Nobody else in the past has ever done anything like this. They've all satisfied themselves with the ordinary, everyday pleasures. And the Buddha's response was, Prince Siddhartha's response was, in that case, they're not worthy of respect. He was determined to find if this was possible, a true happiness, where there's no suffering at all total end of suffering. And he explored and explored and explored and found that it was possible. So we're now living in a world where we know that possibility is there. It's been attempted, and people claim that they've found a true happiness. And so we can follow their teachings. But it's interesting, and in follow their teachings, they never ask us to follow them simply by rote and accept them on their own terms. They asked us to explore as well, because it's only through the exploration that you're going to learn these things. They taught us how to explore our own minds. That's what the Buddha's instructions are all about. Just try this, try that, see what insights you gain into your own mind. The workings of the mind, specifically the workings that cause it suffering that they don't need to cause. So as we practice, it's not simply an issue of being obedient or not being obedient. It's looking into our own minds, using the tools the Buddha gave us. to explore the possibilities that are here. That way we find we'll be able to prove for ourselves, is it really possible? Can you live without, can the mind function without causing suffering? Can you be more and more skillful in how you fashion your experience in the present moment? Can you get to the point where you don't fashion anything? Is that a possibility? The only way you can answer that is to keep exploring on your own. But the payoff is great. Even if you don't get all the way to full awakening, you find that you do learn ways of causing less and less and less suffering for yourself all the time. That in and itself is worth it. The insights you gain, if they're genuine, they're their own, their own reward. I've mentioned several times that the John Fun never went around certifying the fact that you attained a particular level of concentration or attained a particular level of insight. And he had lots of reasons for doing this, but one, if it really is genuine, it's its own reward. You don't need to be patted on the back. You know for yourself there's less suffering. You saw something in the mind that you didn't see before. As a result, you've seen, learned a new skill. You've unburdened the mind. That in and of itself is a great reward. So keep looking into the possibilities. And always be open to the idea that things that you thought were impossible burdens that you thought could never be let down. In fact, they seem such a permanent part of the mind that you don't recognize them, that you're carrying them around. But keep your mind open to the fact that it is possible to let them down. Explore that possibility. That's what the meditation is all about. 